What's up everyone? Welcome back to episode 2 of the 55 Chevy pickup build. Today, unfortunately, we're not going to be building anything. But I am going to break down everything in the build. I'm going to break down parts, I'm going to break down budget, and I'm going to break down everything that we're going to do on this build. Hopefully this will help you guys understand everything that needs to happen if you guys are going to take on a build like mine. It doesn't matter what you're building, breaking everything down is going to help you guys complete your build quickly and efficiently. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what I got back here. I have a checklist of everything that needs to be done and I also have a parts list on that side. So let's go ahead and take a look at that and I'll show you guys what I'm working with. So this is my garage whiteboard. I've laid out basically everything that needs to be done on the truck. And on the right hand side, you'll see a parts list and kind of a running total of everything I need to buy. So if we start on the left side of the board, biggest thing on this truck basically that needs to get done is the suspension. This will be an airbagged truck. I've already got the airbags in place, so all that's good. I have a four link in the rear and I have a Mustang 2 front end suspension in the front riding on air. When you're building an airbag suspension, the bags are basically the cheapest part of the suspension. Um, what a lot of people don't realize is all the stuff you need in order to get that running. So in a basic airbag suspension, you need only five things. You need bags, you need valves, you need a compressor, you need a tank to hold the air, and you need airline, okay? I kind of am going over the top on this. I'm going with a AccuAir system. So that involves a lot of electronics. It'll be a completely controllable four corner system. So what that means is I'll have full control over every single airbag on the truck. If I wanted to go cheaper, I could have just done front and back, but I want to do four corners. What the AccuAir system allows you to do is it allows you to control the speed of your lowering and height. It just basically what I believe is the best air system on the market right now. Unfortunately, and we'll get into the price later, it's very expensive. Uh, we're talking close to 2000 if not more, for just the electronics and valves. So, I need to get the AccuAir system. So after I get the AccuAir system, I can figure out what size shock I need for my system, okay? Moving on down, uh, the rear end has a four-link suspension. If you don't know what a four-link suspension is, just look it up. It's a very versatile suspension system, perfect for airbags. Let's just leave it at that. So I need to, right now I have everything tack welded in the rear. I need to go ahead and finalize the welding. So there's that. In the front end, we're gonna talk about steering. What I need on the steering, I need to buy a rack and pinion, but I've been holding off on this because I want to complete the engine first and I will get a rack and pinion that will suit the engine. I already know which one I need, but I'm just kind of holding off until I finish the engine, I get it mounted in there, and then I can throw the rack and pinion on. Reason I need to match it to the engine is because I'm going with power steering. There's actually a very simple setup. It'll run the stock Mustang 2 power steering as long as you reduce the line pressure coming from the power steering pump. Since Speedway Motors has thought of this problem and they've created a rack and pinion that matches to the GM power steering pump because it's very common to throw a small block Chevy into a Mustang 2 front end because it's very common to use a Mustang 2 front end on basically anything and it's very common to use a small block Chevy on basically anything. Okay, so after the rack and pinion, we need to get our steering column, simple. A uh, universal tilt steering column, I think it's about 32 inches. Basically anything from 28 inches to 32 inches will work. I'm not too concerned about that. And then you also just need your steering shaft. Simple stuff, if you guys have ever built a car, you know all this. Brakes. So I've gone ahead and converted the entire truck to four wheel disc brakes. I did that by using a front end disc brake kit on the Mustang 2 suspension. And in the rear, I have a rear end out of a 70 Camaro that I've converted to disc brakes as well. So four wheel disc brakes. I just need to basically finalize the system. Calipers are already mounted. I just need to run brake lines, bleed it, and we'll be done. That's probably gonna be the simplest thing I do on this build. Okay, and as we move over to the engine and transmission section, this is probably one of the heavier sections because I bought a 4.8 LS motor out of a 2005 GMC Sierra pickup truck. If you guys know anything about LS swaps or LSs in general, you'd know that they're basically, I mean, you can get one going really cheap. I decided to tear mine apart and rebuild it 
you know, some guys just take one straight out of the junkyard and use it in their truck. I wanted to go the extra mile, tear mine down, inspect it, and then put it back together. Uh, and actually I need to add one more thing to this list now because I broke mine. Probably should replace them anyway. I was trying to get away with not doing it, but whatever. Uh, I need to get a new oil pump. I need to reassemble the engine. I need to install the engine mounts, get a new camshaft, get some valve springs, rebuild or buy a new transmission. I have two transmissions that would work. I'm just hesitant on rebuilding them. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do on that yet. And then now I need to buy some piston rings because I broke mine. All right, moving on to electrical. I need to buy a new harness. I need to sort out the engine harness. I'm gonna make a standalone engine harness for this engine. Basically, it's just removing everything that you don't need and using that harness. I need to get me a brake switch, get me some headlights, and I'm gonna go with a push to start system. A push to start system that will be, I believe their digital guard dog is I believe the name of the company. I'm gonna go with their system. It looks pretty simple to wire up. So that's what I'm gonna go with. Moving on to fuel. Fuel is pretty simple. I just need a fuel pump. I need to install this gas tank and I need to modify the fuel filler because I'm gonna, going to have a rear fill system. That means you're going to fill the truck up behind the license plate. It'll be really cool once I'm finished with it. All right, uh, this is the body and wheel section. All right, so for the body and the wheels, so we're gonna go with power windows. Need to get me a power window kit for this truck. I'm gonna replace all the glass. The door glass has already been replaced, but I need to replace the front glass and the rear glass. Floor pan, I have a patch panel. I'm gonna drop that in. That'll get rid of most of the rust on the floor. I have various patch panels for the cab corners and fender wells that I need to get welded on. I'm going to try and make some molds of the front fenders and possibly the rear fenders if it goes well and use all fiberglass fenders. That's something I wanna do. I just wanna, you know, get my feet wet with fiberglassing and I thought might as well do it on the biggest project that I could possibly do it on. I'm gonna go with some Hearst wheels, Hearst Dazzlers, gold. They're gonna look awesome on this truck. And I'm gonna go with a pop door system. With a pop door system, you basically shave your door handles and you have a little remote. It pops the door open when you want to get in. Now moving on. On this section, I have my shopping list, as I'm calling it. Uh, this is basically a rundown of rough estimates of everything I still need to buy. That way, when I do buy something, I could just come over here, cross it off. So right off the top, the Accuray system, this is gonna be my probably biggest expense. Uh, that's the airbag system. That runs about $2,000, unfortunately. So right off the bat, two grand, just to get this truck running. Um, I have to buy a set of compressors. I'm going with Viair, reliable, uh, basically the standard compressor. Runs around $300 for a dual set. I need to get four shocks for the truck. Once I find out what size I need, I'm gonna estimate about $200. Rack and pinion, like I said, Speedway has a rack and pinion that will work with this engine. I'm gonna go with them. Runs about $200, maybe less, I'm not sure. Daring column. Again, uh, basically just a universal steering column, 150 bucks. Steering shaft, $50, universal, double D shaft, nothing fancy, probably about $50. Oil pump, oil pump uh, for this truck, I'm gonna go with the basic one, it's about $50. I could go with a performance setup, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do it yet, about $99. Cams and springs, Cams and springs, I have a particular cam I'm gonna go with and a particular set of springs to go with that cam, about $300, I believe. A new wiring harness, about $200. Just a universal, I think it's a 22 circuit wiring harness, about 200 bucks. New brake switch, universal, 20 bucks. This is that uh, digital guard dog system. This is the remote start uh, slash push to start system. About $300, I believe. I'm gonna go with a Walbro fuel pump, about 100 bucks maybe. I think I'm gonna go external probably because I'm running EFI. Power window kit, I have no clue. I haven't really looked at it, not a priority to me, but I'm expecting to pay somewhere around 200 bucks. Pop door kit, I've seen them, universal kits on eBay, Amazon, whatever, uh, less than 100 bucks. The Hearst wheels I want, uh, they're around one, 30 a set, 
I think 1, 120 maybe. Um, figure about 500 bucks for the wheels. Piston rings now, since I broke mine, I found a set of piston rings and bearings, about 100 bucks. So I know this was probably incredibly boring and I will probably throw something exciting into the video right now. <laughs> Fuck out of here. <laughs> but if you're planning on doing a build, this is the stuff you need to be thinking about. This is what you need to do. You need to break down everything. You need to see what your budget's gonna be like and if you can stay in your budget. One of the problems on this truck is since it's been handed down so many times, um, Honestly, it was just a cab and a frame and an engine when I got the truck. So I've had to acquire, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of parts just to get it in the state it's in now. And yes, I did go a little bit over the top. Um, you know, I could have probably just kept the truck stock suspension and just worked on the body and kept the engine in there and the old transmission and probably been fine. I probably would have had a running truck right now. But the way I figure it, I wanna build the truck the way I wanna build it. So, I've gone all out. And at the end, it's going to be incredible. I'm going to have the greatest truck in the world. I have the greatest truck. I'm going to have an incredible truck. I wanted to go all out on this build because this truck, I know I'm never gonna sell. I'm gonna keep this truck forever, so why not go all out on it? So, I've gone pretty radical. I'm doing the airbag system. I've done the four link in the rear. I've done the Mustang two front end. I've got the LS swap going on. It's kind of crazy. And this is why I'm faced with such a high budget. And, you know, a little bit at a time, we'll chip away at it. If you guys are planning on doing a build, you need to figure out what your time frame is, what your budget is, and what you can do in that time frame and budget. You know, if, it, if I were to do it all over again, I would probably keep the truck completely stock, run and drive the truck, work on the body, get the body perfect, and then, you know, do the engine swap at a later date, swap out the rear end at a later date, do the front end, whatever. But I'm crazy, I'm crazy. So this is what I have to do in order to get this truck running. I know this video was probably incredibly boring and I'm so sorry guys. Next video, I promise you we're gonna get into this build. Just think of this video as a teaser and think of this as a breakdown and just some advice for you guys that are taking on your own builds. I wanna thank you guys again for keeping up with this build. In the next episode, we're gonna be handling the brakes and some of the suspension and you guys are gonna be able to see the truck up close and personal. So if you guys liked the video, please leave me one of these. If you guys didn't, leave me one of these. Also be sure to subscribe so you guys could follow the build and I want to know what you guys are working on so please leave me a comment. Thank you guys, we'll see you next time.